Welcome to the JD Show. Today we have with us a very, very special guest. He's a member of the Parliament of United Kingdom, a very, very successful person, uh, someone that inspires me, and I'm just loving the fact that he's with us on the show. So please help me welcome Tan Daisy. Giving us a pleasure, honor to be with us on the show. Thank you. Look, uh, I am uh, very, very pleased, and especially given that you're a local constituent, as always, well. always good right, to yeah. see uh, one of our local constituents uh, doing very well for themselves uh, and uh, putting themselves about on media as well. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, li I've been I've been living in Slough for about four and a half years, five years. So yeah, it's pretty good. Thank you. So tell us about your journey. What made you come into politics? What was the start? How did it all start? Look, Jack, um, my aim in life was mm -hmm. never to be uh, be an MP. I don't think uh, when I was studying at school that was uh, foremost in my mind. Um, but after university, at university, um, you know, I, I studied uh, mathematics with management studies as my undergrad, mm -hmm. uh, and then went on to do a master's in applied statistics. Mm -hmm. But I'd always been very, very interested in current affairs, in history, uh, in how uh, the world around us is shaped, and that's why uh, my MPhil, so Masters in Philosophy, was actually in South Asian history and its connections with Britain. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that was more for interest rather than uh, to help me find a job. Mm -hmm. uh, I thereafter, after university, uh, went into the construction industry and that's what I have been doing uh, as a day job for the last 15-20 years. But uh, yeah, I, I'd always uh, been um, very much left-leaning in terms of my own politics. Uh, and uh, I've been a, a Labour Party member for a long, long time, well over 15 years. And uh, gradually, um, the local uh, party, they encouraged me, look, we need young people. We need, uh, especially, it would be good to get someone with a brightly coloured turban to stand uh, for council. And hence, I became a councillor. That was the first time I stood in election was 2007. Uh, and that was after several years of Labour Party membership because I was too busy in my day job in, 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 uh, in trying to earn a living, mm -hmm. uh, just as yourself. And um, yeah, so I became a, a councillor, which is very much a part-time role. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I served as a councillor for about a decade. I've served as a, uh, as a local mayor, as a party, uh, local party chairman. Mm -hmm. uh, and then in 2017, a couple of years ago, um, Theresa May decided to call uh, a general election, mm -hmm. and hence uh, I became uh, uh, the parliamentary candidate for Labour in Slough and became uh, your MP. That's great. Thank you. Thank you for that. So, so tell me the, the, the feeling of, it's almost like I, I want to get to the feeling of yeah. why you chose this direction. Yeah. Okay. Well, look, as I said, I'm ver very, very keenly interested mm -hmm. in how our present has been shaped by our past. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the various movements uh, historically that mm -hmm. have led to that. Mm -hmm. And politics, I think, is key. Uh, if we want to shape our present, if we want to make sure that those ideals, that, those values that we hold dear, mm -hmm. then we need to stand up for those values. And that is what I loved about the Labour Party. Um, my grandfather was a committed socialist, he was a teacher, mm -hmm. uh, and, um, you know, and my parents thereafter as well. And given that, that background and given the fact that the Labour Party had always been very, very much an internationalist movement, very much based on cooperation uh, and also fighting for the rights of all, whether they're minorities, whether they're people with disabilities, whether they are hardworking people, whether they're poor, the more vulnerable in our society and those, in fact those around the world. So when it came to fighting apartheid, for example, in South Africa, to make sure that uh, we stood shoulder to shoulder with the likes of Nelson Mandela. Mm -hmm. It was Labour activists, Labour parliamentarians, who made the government of the day listen. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, uh, many went to prison. Uh, we all know, you know the history in terms of uh, apartheid uh, within South Africa, but it's those sort of things which shape and define our present. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for those brave individuals standing up for what they believed in, mm -hmm. then South Africa would not have been uh, a, a free nation for all. So I think those things, whether it's our national health service to make sure that we have quality health care free at the point of need for everybody, uh, in terms of education as well, that fr uh, free quality education for all regardless of their ability to pay or not to pay, mm -hmm. uh, as the case may be, the welfare state uh, as to how we are truly a compassionate society, mm -hmm. all of these things are very, very important and that's uh, those are the sort of things that shaped me to become even more involved in local politics and thereafter 
in national politics. Fantastic. Thank you. So, so I think our audience would like to know what does it take so when it comes to habits, day-to-day -day habits, yeah. what does it really take to be as successful as you are in your, in your personal life? Okay, I want to say, Jack, that first of all, you need to be very, very much driven. You need to make sure that you know, you're always there trying to help people, that it takes a lot of time. It's mm -hmm. almost like a 24-7 occupation. There's, there are so many different things going on. Uh, as a parliamentarian, uh, you could be dealing with dozens of, very, uh, dozens of issues uh, on various things around the world even, not just in Slough, not just within the UK. And there are those people who would like you to raise a voice uh, you know, and uh, make their opinions heard. Uh, and being a parliamentarian, you've, uh, you've got a platform, but you've got to use that very, very responsibly. So the reason why we're speaking is, you know, I I'm your member of parliament, but that, you know, you've got a platform. What you say matters. So media and politics are very, very important in shaping the views of those around us. And, you know, so for me, uh, I, I do like to get a bit of free time as well. So mm -hmm. I'm married, mm -hmm. uh, two kids, mm -hmm. uh, both young, uh, and uh, so, so spend some time with them, spend some time with my extended family, my parents, mm -hmm. grandparents, mm -hmm. brothers, sisters, uh, and other family members. Uh, and try to socialise as much as possible as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in my spare time, I also like to play sports, mm -hmm. uh, read, uh, whether that's newspapers, books, or whatever. You know, anything that I can uh, 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 grab uh, in terms of uh, reading, because I think it's important that we're constantly learning right. and trying to improve ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I, I hope that many of your viewers that they will uh, seek to take a more active part in the mm -hmm. community, in the society mm -hmm. in which they live. Uh, whether it's volunteering, uh, so that's something else that I've been involved in for well over a decade, mm -hmm. volunteering for various things. Uh, you, you should also not um, you know, refrain from taking part in charitable endeavours around. Uh, so for example, I've, been, uh, I've served as a trustee of the Alzheimer's and Dementia Support Services. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been a member of the local MENCAP Society. Uh, served on various other voluntary um, organisations, uh, being a school governor. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are the sort of things that you, know, you can't do if you are not uh, very, very much passionate and you don't have that grit and determination. Mm -hmm. Because um, in public life, Jack, what you realise is there are many ups and downs. Uh, and you cannot always win. Uh, you know, uh, you know it, was, it was very kind of all of your good selves to elect me as your MP in 2017, but uh, it's not to say I've won every single election that I've ever run uh, in, in my life, but you've got to stand up for, for what you believe in and just hope that others will then you know, come around you in solidarity and choose you and your values. That's great. Thank you. We're going to take a break. Okay, so you said values, grit, being more driven, yeah. uh, being more involved in the community, uh, serving others. Yeah. So let's say, what time do you start your day? That couldn't depend. Uh, so it, On could be, it could be our job is not really a nine to five. Mm -hmm. uh, as I was saying before, sometimes it feels like 24-7. Mm -hmm. uh, but... Sometimes it could be that you've got to be up and about you know, from 4 or 5 in the morning. Mm -hmm. Other times you might have a late start. Mm -hmm. So uh, if I've gone to sleep at, late at night, then mm -hmm. I would have a, a later start. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes we're in Parliament at 9, half 9. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it could be a later start, say mm -hmm. 10, 11 or 12. Mm -hmm. uh, the finishing times, are <laughs> there is also, uh, as I've learned, uh, there is no definitive uh, time there. It could be any time between 4 or 5 to 10, 11, 12, 1. The latest I think we were in uh, for votes was quarter past 1. Uh, so uh, that's just the, the nature of the role. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not a Monday, Monday to Friday, mm -hmm. even weekends. Then you're involved in community events. Mm -hmm. You're involved in media interviews. You're involved uh, with campaigning. So mm -hmm. going and knocking on people's doors to say, look, what do you think? What are your views? Mm -hmm. So all of that is important as well. And as you can imagine, in Slough, you've got more than 100,000 people. Mm -hmm. Uh, then, so you've got to ascertain their views, mm -hmm. going to schools, going to uh, various other, um, you know, whether it's a litter pick, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's uh, a, a faith organisation mm -hmm. that they've got, you know, whether it's within the local church or the masjid or the gurdwara mm -hmm. or the mandir, or, yeah, they've got something going on. Right. So sometimes you can't get to every single place, right. but you try to meet as many people as you can. Mm -hmm. 
and then you've got to prepare for debates. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's not a case of just turning up and saying something yeah. because everything in Parliament is actually recorded yeah. word for word. Uh, it's a system called Hansard yeah. uh, and therefore anybody can uh, actually read uh, and, you know, uh, and nowadays digitally listen to yeah. uh, what you uh, may or may not have said even a hundred years plus ago. So yeah. that, that is responsible yeah, for so it, of course. Yeah. You're responsible. So, yeah. Uh, it, it is, as I said before, a, you know, a role of great responsibility. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, so you've got to be prepared. You've got to have a stance on the, the various things. And sometimes I'm listening to other people debating. So mm -hmm. you know, if you're not as knowledgeable about an issue, mm -hmm. then you've got to see uh, uh, seek opinions of those that are more knowledgeable. So you've got to read up around it. There are so many facets of this role, mm -hmm. uh, which I think the, the wider public wouldn't even know about. Wouldn't even know about. Yeah, I agree. I think it's not just about the sort of hours that you work. It's more about even when you're not working, there's thoughts going on behind. Uh, you could be you could be resting in your bed and thinking about things that you need, you need to do the next day, or would be saying the next day in the part of it. Very, very well said, Jack. I mean, that, and, and also there's messaging, whether it's WhatsApp, social yeah. media. For, so I've got a Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, yeah. YouTube. All of those, as well as a website, um, where are, so there are different people connecting through mm -hmm. different forms. Uh, so whether it's uh, late at night, you know, you're thinking about, as you, as you very rightly said, what you're going to be saying in a 7 a.m. radio interview the following morning. Yeah. So all of those things, uh, you know, uh, uh, you have to bear in mind. Uh, but it, you know, it, well, you can only do your best. And that, that's the way that I think of it. Mm -hmm. Is you've got to be passionate about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. That makes the the role uh, as challenging. As it is, mm -hmm. it makes it more enjoyable uh, because you know if you, you you're doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. If you didn't, uh, if you weren't driven, if you weren't passionate about that, you wouldn't be as successful in it. Mm -hmm. So that's the same way that I think. Mm -hmm. Is at, at, at the moment, I've got, I feel I've got that capacity mm -hmm. and that drive to go and serve others. Mm -hmm. um, but there may come a time when you know that's not the path for me. Then you know then I may choose a different path. But at this moment in time, I feel I've got what it takes. Uh, to make our community, make our country and our a wider society a better place, and that is what I will continue to do. That's fantastic. So, when, when it comes to Brexit, what are your thoughts on that? Yes, yeah, so Brexit, I'll tell you what, that <laughs> is one complex issue. Uh, and uh, so, three years ago, there was a referendum, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there was a binary choice. Uh, and there were perhaps simplistic arguments one way or the other as to, mm -hmm. as to what it is. But I think as we've realised over the last three years, it is very, very complex. Um, I'm one of those that, uh, okay, if a vote went one way, uh, I campaigned for Remain uh, mm -hmm. in 2016, but that's just, uh, you know, as I said previously, you're not always on the winning end uh, uh, of the argument or the election. Mm -hmm. uh, so thereafter, uh, what I've been trying to do is, is to make sure that we try to respect that referendum result. Mm -hmm. We try to get the best possible deal for our country. Mm -hmm. Uh, unfortunately, in the last uh, two years plus, uh, the Prime Minister and the government has completely shut out the opposition party. So they've tried to unite just their own party, mm -hmm. so whether it's the Conservatives and, yep. and their allies to the DUP. Mm -hmm. uh, but as they've realised that even they can't stay united, mm -hmm. so after more than two and a half years uh, of bickering and, you know, uh, and not being able to solve it, mm -hmm. now they've finally opened it up yep. to the rest of us as parliamentarians. Mm -hmm. So from being frozen out of the whole Brexit process, mm -hmm. now there seems to be uh, a will to get some sort of consensus. Mm -hmm. And I very much hope that we get that consensus because uh, as badly as these negotiations have been conducted, mm -hmm. what it has illustrated to the rest of the world is that you know, our brand UK, mm -hmm. our country has taken, uh, I feel, a battering mm -hmm. in terms of our global wow. reputation so that is why we need to resolve this issue as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm very, very hopeful that now, uh, with those cross-party talks, we will arrive at a consensus. Not everybody will be happy. There's, mm -hmm. you know, as in life generally, whether it's in family, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's as, as you know, as a husband and wife, you've yeah. got to find a compromise. That, you know, yeah. uh, whether it's indeed with your with your small children, yeah. sometimes you've got to find. You know, you, we can't get our way uh, no. e even with kids, let alone. Uh, with 650 odd MPs in the wider country, yeah. uh, but I am hopeful that we will come to a, a, a compromise mm -hmm. in the best interests of our country. Okay. That's great, thank you. Okay, so how do you deal with um, not, 
it's almost like if you don't win something, you're trying to do something and you don't win. How do you deal with that? Well, you just got to dust yourselves mm -hmm. off and try again. Mm -hmm. yeah, that is the only way. It's perseverance, as mm -hmm. in the rest of life. Whether when we were at school, mm -hmm. you know, any children watching out there, you just got to, you know, keep do your level best, revise mm -hmm. as much as possible. For that exam, mm -hmm. sometimes you get a very good grade, sometimes you don't. Mm -hmm. But what you've got to do is quickly, you know, you haven't got time to mope around mm -hmm. uh, and feel sorry for yourself. You've just got to get up mm -hmm. again and go on to the next challenge. Mm -hmm. And that's the way that you know, I feel that you've got to conduct yourself mm -hmm. in order to succeed. Because if I want those values, uh, those values to be more prevalent within our society, mm -hmm. uh, then that's... You know what I've got to do yes. is that I've got to make sure that we keep putting the, the, the case, mm -hmm. the argument. It mm -hmm. may not be that you succeed in, in, on uh, on one occasion. Mm -hmm. uh, so if, for example, um, there have been times when I stood as a Labour councillor mm -hmm. that we've won control of the council, mm -hmm. so therefore we can implement our policies mm -hmm. locally. Yeah. There have been times mm -hmm. when I may personally have won an election, mm -hmm. but the party did not gain control of the council. Mm -hmm. So yeah. therefore, then you sit in opposition. Yeah. And that can be a very, very uh, heartbreaking situation. <laughs> so, uh, yes, yes. Whereas you can talk, mm -hmm. you can say what you like, mm -hmm. uh, and, and believe me, the likes of me uh, you know, would be uh, in the debating chamber, mm -hmm. we would be making those points across. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, those in control, those in the majority, mm -hmm. they will then have their say, of course. But uh, I think whether it's sports, education, whether it's politics, whether it's business, whether it's you know, in, in general community life, it, you've just got to have that grit and determination, you've got to have that perseverance. Mm -hmm. That is the only way, I think, that you will succeed in the long run. That's great. So, in the next sort of 10 to 15 years, yeah. where do you see yourself? Either in politics or in business, where do you see yourself going? I don't know. But that uh, uh, is, as I said to you, you know, when I was uh, at school, I didn't realise uh, what I would be studying you know, later on, uh, it, let alone whether I was going to become an MP. Uh, at that point in uh, time, my aim was uh, to try to run my own small business at some point, which mm -hmm. is what I eventually went on to do. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, you know, a few years ago, I would never have thought that I would be the MP for Slough, mm -hmm. but here I am. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the town uh, where I spent my formative years, mm -hmm. uh, the office in which we're sitting is literally a stone's throw away from uh, our first ever house, my parents' first ever house mm -hmm. uh, in the UK. Uh, and you know, so, and now the son of immigrants, I am the, the, the MP for the town. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why 10, 15 years uh, is a long, long time. Mm -hmm. At the moment, I know what I'm passionate about at the moment, mm -hmm. and that is being the MP for Slough mm -hmm. and doing my level best. Mm -hmm. And you know, as, as long as I'm enjoying that role, Jack, mm -hmm. I'll continue to do that role. And let's see where it takes us. Okay, fantastic. And last but not least question to you would be, uh, if people want to find you first of all, where, where can they find you? Where can they find you first? Yeah, well look, yeah, I like to pride myself on being a very accessible and approachable person. Mm -hmm. So I would like to think that there are very, very few parliamentarians around the world mm -hmm. who would be as accessible and approachable as me, whether that's on social media, so you can see for yourself uh, and hear for yourself what my views are on various policies or various issues. Mm -hmm. So whether that's on Facebook, on that at Tandesi page, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, website, uh, and on top of that, I also write regular columns mm -hmm. in, in the newspapers, whether they're local or national. Um, and in terms of uh, within Slough, I hold five different surgeries mm -hmm. in different parts of the town, including one on a Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. uh, those details are on our website, and also uh, you, know, you can uh, have a one-to-one -one conversation if you're a constituent mm -hmm. and you've got a particular issue you can come and see me there. Mm -hmm. I am very, very proud to report to you, Jack, that over the last two years, mm -hmm. I have not missed a single advice surgery. I have been there myself, mm -hmm. along with the rest of the team, mm -hmm. talking directly to mm -hmm. constituents, mm -hmm. uh, to allay their concerns. So uh, and there have been ver various constituents, sometimes people coming in tears with uh, issues that are uh, of uh, importance to them. So you do your level best to try to listen to people and try to resolve their issues. So I, I, I'm hoping that through all of those various things, uh, and also I've got an office in Slough, mm -hmm. as well as an office in Parliament. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the, the other ways uh, where people end up seeing me is also at community events. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so, you know, if people are kind enough to invite me and there's a, an event or a function going on or a meeting going on, if I can make it, that will be another way that they could interact with me. Mm -hmm. So there are a plethora of ways that especially local constituents mm -hmm. can see me. Fantastic. If you don't follow Tan Desi, you can find him on pretty much all social media channels. I follow him. It was very easy for me to actually email uh, his office and get this arranged. The, the team was very helpful, so thank you for that. Uh, but yeah, follow him. He's the man uh, to follow at the moment. I actually follow him on pretty much all social media platforms. I watch him doing things. Like I said, he hasn't missed a single surgery in the past two years, so you can actually meet him. There's five surgeries, you said, for a week, a month, a, month, yeah. a, a month, five a month. Uh, and if there's anything you need to ask him, if you live in Slough, uh, he's the best person to come and speak for it. So yeah, that's great. Last question. Yes. That is simply the last question. <laughs> is there anything you'd like to sort of convey to our audience that, is there anything that they can do to be more successful in their life? Is there anything they can be to be more driven in life? Yeah. Well, look, success is also about contentment, mm -hmm. whether you're feeling content. Mm -hmm. I feel that the best way to feel content mm -hmm. is you're doing well for yourself, you're keeping yourself busy in terms of work, in terms of family, in terms of those duties, mm -hmm. but at the same time, also please try to take some time out mm -hmm. for others, mm -hmm. especially those that are less able, more vulnerable than us, mm -hmm. uh, and I think that that also helps in your inner satisfaction, mm -hmm. uh, to feel more content with your own self. Yep. Uh, and for those that, that are out, out there who are young and would like, or young or old, and would like to take part in public life, please, please stand uh, for public office. Uh, you know, if that's something that uh, is of interest to you, then the only way is, is to actually become a member of the party, get more involved, and have your say. That's great. Thank you. Absolute pleasure. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Much Thank appreciated. You. Thank you. Thank you.